Welcome to a TMMI video presentation. Today we'd like to talk about using a Quick Panel Plus with the RSTI EP or Enhanced Performance I.O. The objectives are to be able to configure this I.O. using Prophecy Machine Edition and the Modbus TCP IP Gateway. Then we'd like to create a simple program to be able to control the RSTI EPIO with the quick panel. The assumptions are that we have Prophecy Machine Edition 8.5 installed and we have the RSTI EP modules listed below. I have a photo here of the RSTI modules that I'm actually using for this presentation. You can see that I have the Modbus Gateway and the part numbers for the modules are listed across the top here. But let's get started. I have Prophecy Machine Edition up and we're going to create a brand new project here and call it RSTIEP for example. And we're going to change the project template to Configuration for View and Logic Developer PC. And I have the 12 inch Quick Panel Plus behind me so I'm going to change that from 15 to 12 and I'm also going to have it turn on not only the HMI but also the logic engine in my quick panel plus and I'm not selecting any access drivers for a PLC because we're not going to connect to a PLC so we'll hit OK on that to let it build our project using the template that we selected okay and if we click on the control IO tab and right click and select new driver we can see we have Ethernet I.O. as an option. Once we've selected the Ethernet I.O. and highlight the Modbus TCP IP we can see the property inspector come up and allows us to select the type of I.O. Versamax is in there by default but we actually have the RSTI I.O. for this presentation and we're going to change the IP address of the I.O. that we've set up. It's 192.168.24.13 is the address. And now we need to know how many slots. Well, We have three modules of various input output types so I'm going to change the number of slots to three. And then we can configure each one individually here. So our first empty slot if we click on that bring it up on our inspector. We looked at the module and it is an analog four channel input card. And if I look at my module properties, the number of uh, terminals I have is four. So it's going to change from just AI1 to AI1 through four. Okay. The next module I have is a discrete input module. If I look at my module properties, the smallest I can choose is 8. Even though there's only 4 inputs on the module, the smallest I can choose is 8. So I'm going to choose 8 here. And then I'm going to change my number of terminals down to 8. Of course, we will only be using 4 of the 8 because that's as many as I actually have. And our last module is a discrete output module. And it only has 4 outputs on it. So once again, we'll change it to 8 but we'll of course only really use four of those. Now we can start putting in variable names that we want to use with our I.O. modules. For example, we may want to call this AI01 and that will pop in our variable list. And maybe this first input we'll call the start. Okay. And then our first output we'll call the motor. Now you'll note that some testing has discovered that uh, on my input card the first four bits are used while on my output card the last four bits are used to drive it. Now that we have a couple of variables set up let's create a simple ladder logic program. If we go over and look at our ladder logic program you can also note under our logic that you can select multiple languages. You can program this in uh, instruction list function, sequential function chart, structured text, or function block diagram.
but we'll just stick with a simple ladder for today. We'll double click on that and then we'll insert a rung. So we're going to put in a normally open contact and we'll use this one as a start HMI. I'm going to be able to start it from my HMI, my motor. And then we'll put in a normally closed contact. And this will be our stop. push button from our HMI and then we'll put in our coil over here and this will be our motor and it pops up of course when we start to type in our quick pick list so there's our motor now we'll create uh, a seal in so it'll stay running by dragging and dropping here put normally open contact there and then we can call this our motor again pick it up from our quick list and then I'm going to put in a normally close contact here because the IO uh, push button I have is actually normally closed on here and I'm going to call this the start push button that's actually connected to the IO so now we have our ladder logic built. Let's go over and work with our screen portion of our program. I'm going to right click on our graphics panel and create a new panel. And we'll make it visible at startup so it comes up when we first start it. If we go and look at our variable list, here's our motor. And if I simply drag and drop that onto my screen, I can create a pilot light that will show when our motor is running. And let's put in a couple of buttons for start and stop. So we right click, pick the button tool, and we'll call this one start button. I'm just going to duplicate that button. It already picked stop for me as part of the duplication. And I'm going to double click on our start button. And I'm going to enable touch animation and I'm going to go look for my variable which is going to be start from the HMI right here okay and the stop button is also going to be stop from the HMI so let's select that one from the variable list so we'll just select the stop button okay and hit OK on that so we got a start and a stop from our HMI. All right, well, let's go ahead and download this program to our screen and start it up and see what we have. So I'm going to click the download and start. All right, it gave me an error here because it didn't know where to go for the download. I forgot to put in my IP address for my 12 inch quick panel. So we'll add the IP address for the quick panel there, and then we'll do our download. You can see the build going on here in process. Okay. Now we've downloaded to our panel and we can see our actual panel screen here on our VNC viewer. We'll also be interested to see what our I.O. is doing. So let's look at our ladder logic and let's go online with the ladder logic. Okay. So let's bring our VNC viewer up and then we can watch it exercise the system. So if I hit the start button here from the HMI we can see that it started at the top we sealed in the circuit and the motor stays running we hit the stop button it drops it out so we can see that working we also have down here I've got the web interface showing my RSTIO and the output card right here look for the light on that one and I'm going to run it from the push button that I have on my actual RSTIO. So I'm pressing the push button. We can now see that that started it up and 
sealed in. So the start button ran the rung in the middle there. And so we can see we can stop it again. And so now we got kind of a three-way window going here. We can watch the I.O. come on here as we look at our browser, our web browser interface to our RSTI EPIO. We can see our screen with the VNC viewer and we can be online with Prophecy Machine Edition and watch it work. Our key takeaways for this uh, presentation are the Quick Panel Plus can actually be used as a logic controller to drive the RSTIO over the Modbus TCP IP protocol. And as we demonstrated, it can also be programmed in any of the IEC 1131 languages. Thanks for watching.